came to me with the nano suit, I sacrificed Lawrence Barnes, the man I was, to become prophet. When my own flesh and blood held me back, I sacrificed that too, replaced it like a spare part. When the greatest combat machine fails, what do we do then? What do I do? Welcome back to Panic Knife Doll, I'm Katie, and today I wanted to go over the multiplayer weapons that are available in Crisis 3. There are 32 weapons I split up into four different categories, primary, secondary, explosives, and alien weapons. Both the primary and secondary weapons can have up to three attachments at one time. These attachments can be switched out any time during the gameplay. They're unlocked by increasing your weapon level which can be reached by killing a set number of enemies. So first we'll start with the primary weapons. The Scarab can also be referred to as the MK-21 Assault Rifle. This particular weapon has a high rate of fire, making it best used for medium to close range combat. For better accuracy, fire in short control bursts. Second is the Marshall Shotgun, which is a pump action shotgun from Corbetta Firearms. Crafted around a durable polymer frame and fitted with a retractable stock, the Marshall Shotgun provides excellent short range stopping power even against heavily armored targets. Third is the DSG-1. It's a precision rifle that can be used to ensure more accurate placements of bullets at longer ranges. Rounds fired do not lose damage over distance, making each shot very effective. The DSG-1 sniper rifle is built for optimal levels of accuracy. Although the damage is high, the DSG-1 has a low rate of fire and low ammunition. Fourth is the OGR. It's a large caliber machine gun that allows you to take down multiple targets. Although very powerful, it lacks accuracy. And because of its bulky size, it weighs you down, affecting your mobility. Fifth is the Feline X3. This submachine gun's rounds do not do much damage from afar, but the Feline more than makes up for it with the high rate of fire best utilized for close range. Sixth is the FY71M. The assault rifle has a medium rate of fire and medium accuracy. It's capable of both fully automatic and semi-automatic fire. The FY7 does have a slight vertical recoil when firing on fully auto, so burst fire to be more effective. Seventh is the Predator Bow. It's an advanced hunting weapon created by Crynet Armories. It uses four different arrowhead types for various effects and gameplay styles, including explosive tips and electrically charged arrowheads. The high performance lethal bow is just as accurate as a sniper rifle, but way more silent. The bow is one of only a few weapons that can be fired from stealth mode without breaking the cloak. Eighth is the MK60. It's a fully automatic machine gun manufactured by Camarilla Solution. It's very powerful, allowing you to conserve your ammo. The accuracy isn't as spot on as an assault rifle, but the vertical recoil is manageable for the machine gun size. Ninth is the Typhoon, which is a multi-barrel assault rifle manufactured by Crynet Systems. It features 10 separate barrels capable of reloading all rounds at once. This weapon has a massive rate of fire with 500 rounds per minute with great accuracy, but the ammo will dry up quickly. The default underbarrel shotgun that comes attached to the Typhoon will fire 36 rounds of the primary weapon's ammo all at once. Tenth is the Takedown. It's an advanced battle rifle with semi-automatic fire, making it strong and accurate at long ranges. Eleventh is the Alpha Jackal. It's a tactical, heavy-duty shotgun. The Jackal has a high stopping power and low range. Unlike other shotguns, though, in Crisis 3, the Alpha Jackal is fully automatic, allowing multiple shots to be fired downrange in a short time. However, using this weapon on fully auto will increase the vertical recoil. Twelfth is the Grendel or the MK24. It's an accurate heavy assault rifle with immense stopping power. It uses hollow point rounds and a three round burst fire mode. Thirteenth is the Gauss Sabo Gun. It's a heavy, single shot sniper rifle manufactured by Camarilla Solutions and Crynet Systems. This weapon is highly effective for long distance combat. Fourteenth is the K-Volt. It's an electrostatic pellet gun manufactured by Crynet Systems Prototype Division. It has high rate of fire and great accuracy at close range. When an enemy is hit, it drains their suit energy, preventing them from using armor or stealth capabilities. Unfortunately, the pellet travels much slower than a regular bullet, so you'll need to fire ahead of a moving target to make up for this. Fifteenth is the Scar Mod 2, or the MK-20. 
It's a superior combat assault rifle. This weapon has average stopping power, but the vertical recoil makes the rifle very inaccurate. Controlled burst fire will get you the best results. Overall, this is a general purpose assault rifle. Sixteenth is the MIC, which stands for Microwave Incendiary Klystron Emitter, which is a unique weapon manufactured by Crynet Armories. It deploys weaponized microwaves in a continuous beam through battery power. This weapon is pinpoint accurate like a sniper rifle with great hipfire accuracy, but it doesn't cause nearly as much damage. It's best suited for medium to long ranges. And 17th is the LTAG, which is a heavily advanced grenade launcher that fires tactical airburst grenades. You'll have even more control over when and how the grenade should be detonated. You can bounce grenades around corners or deploy minefields. This will be your only primary weapon that doesn't have an attachment. So that'll conclude all the primary weapons of Crisis 3. Now we'll move on to secondary weapons. The sidearms in Crisis 3 come in three styles, semi-auto pistol, machine pistols, and revolvers. So we're first going to look at the M12 Nova, which is a semi-automatic tactical pistol best used in close quarter combat or between reloads of your primary weapon. Damage is low, along with low fire rate. Second is the AY69. It's a machine pistol designed for players who want the full auto feel to carry over to their sidearm. As with most machine pistols, you're going to sacrifice accuracy, range, and damage in exchange for your increased rate of fire. It's best used in close quarters and for finishing off an enemy between reloading. Third is the Hammer 2. It's a heavy semi-automatic pistol with high damage but low fire rate. If you have an accurate shot with your sidearm, this could be the best bet for you. Stability and accuracy are just as good as the M12 Nova, which it's often compared to. The fourth and final sidearm is the Majestic 6. It's a heavy revolver using 50 caliber ammunition making it deadly at close range. Since it is a revolver, it uses a speed reloader to reload all six bullets at one time. It has bad recoil, so it's best to leave a little time in between shots when firing far away and shoot more rapidly when at close range. Now moving on to explosives, they're available in every class for multiplayer mode and your class wouldn't be complete without one. First on the list is the M17 Frag Grenade. As you can guess, it's your standard explosive grenade and each player is given one per life. It has a 3 second fuse so the player can cook before throwing. Damage is very high and when used correctly it can be greatly beneficial to your team. Second is the M34 Flashbang. It's a tactical explosive grenade and each player is given 2 per life. It will instantly blind any enemy as it emits a very loud explosion of blinding light when deployed. You can toss it into rooms or around corners to check for enemies before entering. Keep in mind they're not intended to have high damage, just to disorient the enemy. Also, the flashbang can affect more than just your enemy. If you're in the radius of the explosion, you can be blinded as well. Third is the Rex Explosive. This explosive can be compared to the classic C4. Each player is given one per life. They can be thrown or planted. Once planted, it can be detonated by remote at any time. It's perfect for setting traps during objective game modes and is the second most powerful explosive available in Crisis 3. Fourth is the M18 Smoke Grenade. This tactical explosive grenade is the least used tactical item. Each player is given one per life. The M18 will create a small cloud of smoke that prevents your opponent from seeing movement or actions from you and your teammates. Not only does their vision get obstructed, but NanoVision will read the entire cloud as red heat signature, making the visor useless. Fifth is the jaw. It's the most powerful explosive device in Crisis 3. Rather than a hand-thrown device, this is a rocket launcher used to clear out capture zones. Damage and accuracy is high without many drawbacks. It's exceptionally powerful with great range. Sixth is the M19 EMP grenade. Each player is given two per life. The EMP grenade detonates a small electromagnetic pulse that disorients those nearby. It will instantly drain all nanosuit energy from a player within the 3 second blast radius. It's perfect equipment to use for uncloaking enemies in hunter mode or any other game mode with players using stealth. So that'll cover all the explosives, now we'll get into the final category which is alien weaponry. These guns are scattered all around the maps and you can pick them up from dead alien bodies. So first on the list is the Pinch Rifle. It's a fully automatic alien rifle. It's similar to many normal automatic rifles, but it fires plasma instead of bullets. It will be preloaded with 100 rounds. Like all alien weaponry, players cannot aim down the sights, but instead zoom in slightly with reticle on screen. Second is the Bolt Sniper. It's a semi-automatic alien sniper rifle. 
You'll have variable zoom sniper scope with two set distances. Although only four plasma rounds are preloaded in each bolt sniper, each round will be a one-shot kill. Third is the incinerator. The incinerator is an alien flamethrower. It's a thermal-based weapon launching fireballs at its targets. This weapon's ammunition counter is 200. The flamethrower uses 10 per second, allowing the flamethrower to be used for a total of 20 seconds. Fourth is the X-Pac Mortar. The X-Pac is an alien launcher that fires three rounds at one time. The X-Pac comes preloaded with six rounds, which means it can only be fired twice before throwing it away. The plasma motors that are fired do massive damage to anyone near them. Fifth is the Reaper Cannon. It's a fully automatic alien minigun shooting plasma bolts at high rate of fire. It's not as accurate as the pinch rifle, but has a higher impact with more ammunition. Each cannon comes preloaded with 100 rounds of plasma ammo. And that's it. That was an overview of the weapons of Crisis 3. Let me know which ones are your favorite. Like this video if you enjoyed and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.